In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to access your WordPress database if you're using SiteGround hosting. There's a lot of different reasons why you might need to access that database. You might want to change a username or a password. You might need to update your site's URL if something happens and you get locked out. Also, if you switch over to an SSL certificate and your site changes to HTTPS, you might need to make a few changes in your database there. Also, if you need to export your database for any reason, uh, if you're moving your site to another host, that's a common reason, or you might just want to go in and make a backup of your database file. I'll show you how to do all of that here. The first thing that we need to do, obviously, is log in to your SiteGround admin panel. You do that from here uh, at ua.siteground.com. That'll send you to the login screen here. Just enter your email address and password. Go ahead and click sign in. SiteGround has their own custom admin panel. But in addition to that, they also use cPanel, which is some software that allows you to manage your sites uh, much easier. And so SiteGround does use that third-party cPanel. So I'm going to show you how to navigate the admin area so you can get to your cPanel. We first need to come up here and click on My Accounts. Here you'll see a list of all the sites that you are currently hosting with SiteGround. You may just have one in your account, but whatever the case is, no matter how many websites you have, you're going to access all of those websites through one cPanel. So you do that by clicking on this red Go to cPanel button right here. All SiteGround sites use MySQL databases, which is very common, especially for those who uh, use WordPress for their website. And there's a great piece of software that's called PHP My Admin. That is a piece of software that makes it a lot easier to make changes, um, add things, delete things to a MySQL database. So there are a couple of ways that you can get to PHP My Admin through cPanel. One of the quickest ways is to do a search over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and type in PHP My Admin, and you'll see it show up here on the right-hand side. Also, you could scroll down and look for the databases section, and again, you'll see PHP My Admin listed here. So once you go ahead and click on that, it'll open up the PHP My Admin interface and I'll show you how to access the database. SiteGround automatically logs us in here to the PHP My Admin. And what you'll see is over here on the left-hand side, you have a listing of all of the websites that you have installed. Every MySQL database server is gonna have this information underscore schema database to it. All of the rest of the databases listed, each one of those correlates to a specific site that you have hosted with this plan on SiteGround. When you set the WordPress site up uh, at the very beginning, you had an opportunity to give your database a name. And if you did that, then that name is going to show up after the underscore. Uh, you'll see your user account, which SiteGround automatically assigns to you, then an underscore, and then whatever name you gave your database when you went and installed WordPress. So all of those are listed over here on the left. Just go ahead and click on one, and then you'll be able to see all the tables that are listed in that database. Here you'll see a pretty standard set of WordPress database tables. There are a couple of additional ones that are in here that were added when I installed a few plugins. So these ITSEC, distributed storage, lockouts, logs, and temp, these are from a security plugin that I'm using for some storage there. And also uh, Yoast SEO adds a couple of additional tables down here. But everything else that you see is a standard WordPress database table. All new installations of WordPress are given all of these tables. Before I show you how to edit anything in your database, I just want to make sure that you understand that a simple little edit in here, if you're not sure what you're doing, can bring down your entire site, and it can be very difficult to uh, figure out what you did or what was the cause of the error. So be very, very careful if you make any edits in here. I really only recommend that you come in here if you know what you're doing or if you've gotten very specific instructions and feel very, very comfortable with, with what you're doing here in the database because one simple thing can bring your site down. So let that be a warning, just be very careful. To make a change to any one of the values in one of your WordPress tables, what you'll want to do is click on Browse for the table that has the information you want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the WP Options table. Now you'll see a row for each and every option and value that are stored in this table. You'll notice some of these up here, site URL and home. These are the URL that correlates to your website. So a lot of people, you might need to change that to HTTPS. Or if you change the entire domain name, domain name of your site, move it to a different domain, you might need to update those values there. 
You also have your blog name and blog description. You can set these up as you're installing WordPress, and you can also change them at any time through the WordPress interface. So you really shouldn't need to touch them here in the raw database. I would recommend that if you need to make any changes to your blog name or description, that you just do that in the regular WordPress admin area and don't mess around with the database. It's a lot easier to do in the WordPress admin area. If you need to change any of these values, you can come over here and click Edit. The only thing that you'll really ever want to change is this option value in this field. You want to leave the option name and all the other things as they are. WordPress needs those to stay that way uh, in order to function properly. So you're just going to look at the option value. That's just one example of something that you can change and that's just one of the several tables that WordPress uses. Again, if you know what you're doing and you know where to go and where to look, then go ahead and come in here and make some changes. Or if there's something that absolutely needs change, feel free to come in here, but just be very, very careful with, with what you update in the database. If you need to export your database from SiteGround, you can come up here to the top and click on the Export button. By default, this is set to just display the minimal options, which is going to give you an SQL file. You can click on Custom here, which will open up a, a lot more of advanced settings that you can customize if you know what you're doing. You can take a look at some of those settings here. I almost always just leave this to the quick display options and get that file as an SQL file. That's what you'll usually need when you go to import your database uh, into uh, onto another server or if you're moving your WordPress site. So most people, the quick option will just be uh, all that you need and you don't need to go into the custom and set any advanced options. So. I'd recommend you try just leaving that on the quick method to start with. And then you would just click the Go button here at the bottom, and that would export the file and download it onto your computer. So I hope that gave you just a nice overview of PHP My Admin and how to get to your WordPress database uh, through SiteGround. There are lots of other things that you can do with uh, PHP My Admin and updating your database, but a lot of them are a lot more advanced, and I just wanted to provide you a nice simple overview. If you guys have any questions, feel free to add them to the comments. Uh, like this video if you thought it was super helpful, and if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that as well.